Hello friends, uh, I just watched a couple of videos by Mitch uh, where he's answering uh, my last critique of his heretical teaching regarding, uh, well, just about everything that he has to say is heresy, but in particular regarding Romans chapter number 5 where the Word of God says, and I'll read it one more time just to be clear on what it says, starting in verse number 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed, when there is no law. Nevertheless, and again, nevertheless, it means in spite of this fact, in spite of the fact that there was no law and that sin was not being imputed to man, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Now, the Bible says here very clearly, and even, look, even, even the corrupt uh, versions that Mitch uses say the same thing. Uh, from the New International Version, Romans chapter 5, and uh, verse 13, okay? Well, we'll start in 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin... And in this way, death came to all men because of all sinned. Verse 13, For before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. The New Living Translation says, When Adam sinned, Sin entered the entire human race. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given. They all died anyway, even though they, they did not have to disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. What a contrast between Adam and Christ, who is yet to come. Well... Uh, the New American Standard says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses. I, he may be using this New Living Translation which is the one that uh, would lend the most support to what he says, and the other two, even though they're corruptions, uh, at least are, are true to the text, and make it very clear that from Adam to Moses, that death reigned, and that there was no law, and that in spite of the fact that there was no law, that death reigned over all men. Okay? Now, his contention is this, that without the law, there can be no sin. And it's based on, on, on the, uh, the, the, the idea that sin is the transgression of the law. Well, that's what it is today. That's what it is today. But at that time, there was no law but sin still existed. Paul said it plainly, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. You see, the law, in Mitch's view, is the source of sin. Without the law, there can be no sin. However, and he's adamant about this. He insists that there has to be a law. 
There has to be a list of do's and don'ts that Adam transgressed or he couldn't possibly have sinned. But the Bible said that sin was in the world before the law, before the law. The, the law does not cause sin. It said over in Romans chapter number 7, uh, what is it? He says, where is the verse at? Well, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? In verse 7, God forbid, may I, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. See, now, sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. Before the law came, sin was not imputed. It was not laid to their charge. They did not have to answer for their sin before the law came. It's very clear. I don't... I mean, how twisted is, is a man who, who can read the words and then tell you that they don't say what they say? It's, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me, the, the depth of his self-deception. One more time. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Sin was in the world prior to the law being given. The law being given. Which law? The law that he's talking about in Romans 7, verse number 7, where he said, I had not known sin, but by the law. The law that did not cause sin but that reveals and defines what sin is. Now, Mitch has, has got some serious, serious uh, uh, problems. And uh, I, I've watched him now, he, I've watched him now chase it, go in circles, circular reasoning on everything. He, he starts with a thesis and then everything that doesn't fit his idea, he rejects as not being scriptural. Or he denies what it actually says in order to, to uh, support his position. And, and because of this, this, this is an open rebellion against the word of God. It shows a total lack of spiritual understanding on his part and a desire to prop up what is merely a philosophical form of Christianity. That's what it is. It's a philosophy. A philosophy. And he believes that us poor, dumb Bible believers... Uh, don't possess this uh, esoteric knowledge that he's privy to. That he is somehow superior to us who believe that this book right here, the, the Word of God that I hold in my hand, this is the AV 1611, good old King James Bible, that this book is filled with errors, but that he has the ability to point out all of the errors and set you free from your bondage to the Word of God. Well, Jesus, didn't he tell his disciples, now you are free through the words that I have spoken, were not his words the words of God? Uh, 
Didn't Jesus say in John 17 and 17, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. In the psalm, I believe it's the 139th psalm, where it says that God has exalted his word above his very name. And Psalm chapter 12 and verse 6, he promised to preserve his word from this generation forward. Peter writes of the word of God in 1 Peter chapter 1 and says that it's the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Now, he may choose to follow the teachings of uh, the school of higher criticism and a bunch of unregenerate uh, uh, unbelievers and infidels who pass themselves off as Christians. Uh, and, and when you look at their life's work, it's evident that they were set in array against the very God whose word that they uh, uh, maligned he may choose to uh, see himself as a man who is capable of discerning good from evil and uh, as, as one who is therefore fit to sit in judgment on the words that will judge him someday. But I, I don't see myself that way. I really don't. I see this book, the Bible, God's Word. This is, this is God's instruction manual for life. This is God's map to heaven. This is God's plan that's been revealed for the future and for all eternity. I see this book as the only thing on this earth that is totally reliable, that is perfect and that is pure. And if having faith in God's ability, not just ability, but his promise to preserve his word is, uh, is a bad thing, then <laughs> I'm in a mess because I believe it from cover to cover, every word of it. And I really, I, I don't understand how anyone even bothers to make a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnate Word of God, who doesn't believe in the Word of God, who doesn't trust God's Word, who doesn't believe God's promise to preserve it, who feels himself suited uh, to the task of going through and excising portions from Scripture based on his doctrine, his perception of what things should be. In one of his previous videos, he made mention of uh, how the... the uh, the men in Jeremiah's day. Jeremiah came with a negative message. And they they would not believe it. They chose not to believe it. They said that Jeremiah was a false prophet. They cast him into prison. And uh, even when he was in prison, his, his uh, companion Baruch came to him and he, he wrote a roll that contained all the words that he had previously prophesied. And Baruch went down to the, uh, to the uh, princes uh, of, of, of Israel, and he read in their ears all the words that Jeremiah had pinned down, and, uh, or that he had pinned down uh, acting, you know, the words that Jeremiah spoke. And so anyway, this, this, this scroll of the word of God ended up in the hands of the, of the king. And it says in Jeremiah 36, 21, So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out 
of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. And Jehudi read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes which stood behind the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the row was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. You see, what happened was, they get in there and uh, they hear the message from Jehudi about judgment coming. A judgment that, a, 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 a message that everything wasn't all right, like they were saying. A message that didn't tickle their ears and, and make them feel good about themselves, but rather called them to repentance. And Jehudi started out with a pen knife, just excising small portions from the, from the roll and throwing them into the fire until eventually it was all destroyed. And that's exactly where this is going. There's already a version of the Bible out called The Message that's a... a a fantastical uh, departure from scripture. It is a story that follows the plot of the Bible roughly. And that's what men are putting forth today. They have an idea of what the Bible teaches and therefore they want to take what little truth they think that they understand and either make all the Bible fit that or reject the parts that don't. And they don't realize that they may not have all the truth. They don't realize that God put his Bible together in a manner that would cause men with their attitude to stumble and fall. In Isaiah 28 for verse 10 it says for precept, that's truth, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. In uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 13 we're told to compare spiritual things with spiritual. That's what it's talking about here said in verse 11, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. You see, to the unbelieving, to the proud in heart, to the arrogant, God's word is impossible to understand. They therefore must pull out their pen knife and excise the portions that they can't reconcile in their carnal mind. But to the believing and to them who are humble before the Lord, every bitter thing is sweet. And we love God's word. And in reality, his, his, his attack on the word of God is, uh, is the main reason that I address his teachings. The things that he says, says uh, are, are, are patently ridiculous. And, and if you look at his videos and see uh, how few people view them, you'll see that, that it doesn't really merit the attention that I give it. But when he starts attacking the Word of God, that's another matter altogether. 
And this has been his practice since the beginning uh, with this matter of the book of James, where he's attacking the canon of scripture. He's trying to, he, he, he's made statements about portions of the book of Matthew, about uh, uh, the epistles to the Corinthians, even about some of the writings in Hebrews. And of course, that book of Revelation, well, that's got to go. <laughs> we can't have that for crying out loud. I mean, uh, that's the one where God, uh, where the Lord Jesus told the Laodiceans, and I do believe he's addressing Mitch as one of them, uh, that whom the Lord loves, he scourges and chastens every son that he receives. He rebukes and he, and he chastens every son that he receives and tells them to repent, to repent. And uh, Mitch won't repent. He won't repent. He can't. He can't hear, he doesn't hear God's word. He's too, too lost in his own conception of what God's word says and and what he thinks it teaches well if anything is clear to somebody who's been a Christian for any length of time at all is you can make the word of God teach anything you want to what's really important is what does God's word say what does it say well to get back to the uh, the start of this video it said this, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law law. No, it's not imputed. It's not considered. It's not laid to their charge. As I said in my previous video, if it were, then every one of us would drop dead the moment that we committed the first transgression. But God in his mercy has extended grace to us and, and graciously uh, allows us to live our lives out with the desire that we will recognize that we are indeed sinners and recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood to save us from our sins and put all of our hope, our trust, our faith, our belief in the Lord Jesus and his atoning death and his resurrection as the means of our salvation that we might become new creatures in Christ Jesus our Lord now I don't see how anyone can profess to be a new creature and denigrate hate and attack the word that brings us the, the knowledge of how to be saved. I really don't.